Hello again, everyone. Welcome to 90s to Now. I am Jerry Strauss, and we are rocking. We are rolling. Uh, and we're doing so with the uh, quote unquote surf dudes with attitudes. We're doing it all week long because it's coming up fast. October 13th, New York City. The band is literally getting back together again. The entire California Dreams band all in one place at one time. And we're going to talk all about it as we've been doing. It's 90s Dream Fan Fest. It's all going down at Stitch Bar and Blues, West 37th Street, New York City. Uh, and uh, we're so excited. And we're so excited right now because we have one of the one of the highlights, one of the favorites, one of the true, true uh, superstars from the California Dreams Band, Cal Kelly Packard. How are you? I am well. How are you? Um, good. Thanks. So, so excited to talk to you as, as we've been excited to talk to everyone that's a part of this band, because you guys are so excited. Everyone just seems so enthusiastic and psyched that you're all getting back together. You're going to be performing, doing meet and greets, a Q and a, you're all going to be in the same place at the same time for the first time ever. How excited are you for this particular reunion? <laughs> so as it gets closer, the more excited I get, because I can't believe it's actually happening. Um, but yeah, I, for one, have not seen Diana um, since the show wrapped. So to be able to see her for the first time in 30 years just makes me so happy. <laughs> and then some of the rest of the gang I haven't seen since we did Jimmy Fallon, I don't know, 14 years ago. So yeah. I am so excited just to be with my friends and having fun and, and doing all the things that we, you know, that we grew up doing. <laughs> yeah. And we, all, when, and we grew up watching and we grew up enjoying and we, we still are. And clearly uh, the buzz is, is quite the indicator that there's so many people out there who are excited for this and never stopped loving what you guys did. Uh, as part of the the California Dreams band, I want to take it back to the beginning, as we've been doing, you know, with everyone in, in the band, because we know so much about what we saw on screen. We know about the music, but we don't know everything about how you guys got to that place to form this perfect storm. How did you get into acting and get to the point where you became one of the original members, one of the OG members of the uh, of the band? So I started acting when I was eight years old and I started doing commercials. I uh, had a very successful first year when I was eight years old. I thought I was the bomb. Um, I think I got like seven commercials in one year. And then for five years, so from nine until at least 12 or 13, I auditioned my little heart out and didn't get anything. So I learned very early on what the business was like. And I think in one year I had over 330 auditions. So just to put it into perspective, I was able to understand how cruel the business can be, um, but I still kept going. I still kept plugging away. And then I started getting guest spots on shows that were really popular in the day. And that just kind of part, it made my portfolio, my resume look better. And then when California Dreams came up, it was the kind of thing where it was the perfect storm. I was in the perfect place where I could devote all my time and energy to the audition process, which was very lengthy. There were nine auditions. Um, five, four or five were in the music studio because we had to be able to sing as well as act. Um, and then, yeah, it was just, mm -hmm. it's a day I'll never forget because I was still young. I think I was barely 17 and it was just the greatest day of my life when I landed that role. You know, and you, you brought up something I, I did want to talk about because such a unique situation in that, you know, you're, you're looking for all around entertainers, people with some sort of, at least I'd imagine a comfort level of familiarity with music, uh, yeah. being around it, making it, uh, in addition to, of course, you know, everything else you'd look for to fill that role you're acting and, um, what kind of beyond singing like did was there any sort of musical prowess that you had to that you had to display or you had to develop as far as just looking comfortable playing instruments and being a part of a band <laughs> yeah i absolutely had to look like i knew what i was doing playing that bass <laughs> and even though i did not know how to play the bass i thought i did a pretty good job at faking it um i very seriously and tried to learn some chords that could at least get me through and 
tried to look like I knew what I was doing. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And, and, you know, of course you get the role. When we're talking about Tiffany, we're talking about sort of, well, again, we're talking about one of the original members of the band and everyone in the band, of course, has a certain role, a certain image, perhaps that uh, the, the uh, people behind the scenes had in mind for you. What what did they know about who you were supposed to be, about your character, your image, so to speak, going into the show? My understanding is that they knew that she was to be a surfer, a typical blonde, uh, happy-go-lucky, um, the one that's sort of the um, the glasses always half full type of attitude. What was very interesting, though, for me and for the audition process was they they clearly didn't have a look in mind while those things were on paper it wasn't like an automatic blonde you know surfer look because at network which is the final audition for for my character tiffany it was me jenny kwan and Alyssa um, Wiener, and she was hispanic so we had a filipina a hispanic and me they obviously didn't really have in mind a look. Hmm. Now, luckily I got it and they chose the blonde, but it could have been any one of us that played that role. So it was very interesting to me that while they had this character breakdown, they truly didn't ma- it didn't matter to them what the nationality was of the character. That's that's really cool. And it's cool. Uh, a really interesting tidbit, you know, of course, mentioning Jenny Kwan, who would then be a part of the band. What in season two, I think, is when uh, mm-hmm. when she would join the fray. So some things kind of work out the way, I guess, that that they should. Um, <laughs> yeah. She was always destined to be a member of the band. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. Now. The show the band you guys so popular such a huge hit with fans what was that like for you because it, it's got to be different going from you know commercials and guest starring roles etc cetera, etc cetera. now you're in this role everybody knows everybody's watching you week to week and loving your music and now you're going out in public whether it's official appearances or just trying to go out to the store or whatever and life has to have changed right i mean there has i i feel like there had to have been uh just a, a an elevated amount of attention out there in the world towards you guys at all times not to mention the magazines and things like that did you enjoy that change of life and is, is that the way it felt to you So I feel like it was a relatively slow shift but definitely a shift and what changed for me drastically is that I went from being in school with my friends since same friends since second grade to having to do my senior year um, on the set. And that was difficult because I was very close with my friends and, and the people that I had known for so long. But I realized if I was at school, I would have been dreaming of being on a show. <laughs> so I had to just, you know, wrap my head around what was happening. And then as far as the you know, the shift of people recognizing me or or recognizing the show that happened a little slower. But I do remember specifically being back east because it hit big back east. And we were doing, oh, I want to say maybe something at one of the malls. So anyway, I do recall being in, I want to say we were in New Jersey in a mall. Of course, of course you were. Oh, and there was a group of kids that slowly was like, you know, whispering about me. And then it became a very big group and then a very large group. And I was overwhelmed. I was with my at the time boyfriend who became my husband. And we sort of had to hightail it into Mm. a store for safety. And they shut the doors because all of a sudden there was a pretty good sized group outside the store. That's when it hit me that, that it was, my life was a little different and my husband and I kind of joke about that to this day, that moment and that um, time, because honestly, it didn't happen that often, at least not for me. I know for some of the boys it happened more often, um, but it was it was very 
quick to recognize that, oh, okay, this show is a bigger deal than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, did you guys do like official appearances a lot going out there? I know, um, you know, we spoke about some some of those instances where you'd go out to a mall or whatever the case may be. And, you know, when they knew you were coming, that's when hysteria could kind of hit a little bit when the crowds yeah. really started forming. That was just it is we did do a mall tour. I feel like we went to Texas and we went back east and we went to a couple Midwest places. And it was just that it was the anticipation of us coming that everybody was ready for. So they were all excited and the energy was amazing. <laughs> and they just they don't do things like that anymore. It kind of makes me sad that they don't um, have opportunities like that, you know, for the fans to just get so close to celebrities and people that they love. Yeah. Although, you know, ironically, that's exactly what you guys are doing on October 13th in New York is, you know, for those of us, we're all coming full circle for the band and for those of us who would be those packing it in and, and flocking towards you and swarming you. Everyone's <laughs> going to kind of reunite on that day and uh, and fill those roles. Uh, now, you were one of the uh, you were one of the members of the band that was there from beginning to end. So you were there for sort of the whole evolution, the whole history. And then finally, you know, all great things have to come to an end. We're saying goodbye to that, uh, you know, that period of time that was the California Dreams band. How did you feel about that? Did you know ahead of time that things were wrapping up or how much notice did you have and, and what were your feelings about it? We we did. We did know that it was coming to an end and the anticipation of that was very difficult. Um, we tried to prepare ourselves for what that last gig would be like. It was there's nothing that can prepare you for that because, I, again, I was there from the beginning. So I watched, you know, all the changes, all the turns, all the twists. But what the one thing that remained is that we had good music and we were a good band and we we loved being together and so when it ended i'll never forget that day because we were incredibly emotional and i can watch that episode now and i can see where i am i can't hide my emotions mm -hmm. they're right there i can watch it at the fans can all see it i had to turn my head several times because i was crying so hard and it was just that moment of knowing that it was all over and we were sad that it was over and we felt like it didn't need to be over just yet but like you said all good things have to come to an end yeah yeah and uh it definitely marked a uh, what had to feel like a big life change for you just moving from that and also the perception of you because for those years you know we knew you best as a member of the California Dreams band and then you would go on you know not too long after that to probably the other thing that I think the world knows you best for which is seeing you on the beach um and a big leap to say the least as far as not only, you know, who you were and how you were presenting yourself, but also the type of audience that was watching you. Uh, for you, was that sort of a, an easy, comfortable decision? Because you're going from one place where it's, you know, the teens and the kids and, you know, such a, a very young audience, family audience. And then you're going to this whole other outlet where it's the entire world, this huge international hit of a show, mm -hmm. uh, but more of an adult audience, more of, you know, you're putting yourself in a situation where you are going to be the adult crush of people all over the world. You're, you know, you know, essentially being on this show where you are going to automatically be somewhat of a sex symbol because everyone uh, uh, on that show was, um, was that comfortable for you? Was that desirable for you? How did that feel to make that shift? Um, for me, it was comfortable. I had already done um, four episodes of Baywatch uh, prior to being a regular. So I was very um, accustomed to being a part of that group. Um, and in fact, they wanted me to come on earlier than I did, but I was in the middle of my contract with Dreams, so I couldn't. Um, so it was a natural shift. It was a good one. I would have been at the beach every day anyway, <laughs> 
being paid to be there. So uh, it was very easy. And I was lucky because I knew going into it that my character was not quite the Pamela Anderson. Um, she was a little more innocent and younger. And so I could embrace that. And they really embraced me and they took in my energy and my vibe. And it really was not a big stretch from Tiffany um, to play April. So it was easy and fun. Had a great time. Very cool. Very cool. And, uh, you know, you, you mentioned it before, but I, I do want to bring it up. 2010, The Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon comes a calling. And after all these years now, uh, we're going to have a California Dreams band reunion. We're bringing, you know, at least some of the members of the band back together for that. Uh, it, it was very cool. It went viral. I remember watching it then. I've watched it a bunch of times since personally. Uh, just so much fun to see you guys having so much fun back together. Were you excited when you got the call for that opportunity? I was. I was very excited. I had just had a baby two months prior, so I wasn't <laughs> super thrilled about getting out there, but I was not going to miss the opportunity because I'm a huge Jimmy Fallon fan. So it was definitely a highlight for us as a cast and to see that he still will make comments about us and that he truly is a fan is just like, oh, and um, you know, I <laughs> out that he might actually come to the concert. <laughs> so we could, um, yeah, I, I was really excited. It, it, it's out there. It's out yeah. there on social media. People trying to create a stir, trying to get his attention. And uh, mm -hmm. hey, hey, you never know. I, I think Aaron Jackson was on the show. And I think he said that um, he'd heard, or it might have been Brentley Gore who had said that apparently your theme, the California Dreams theme song is like he, top three of one of his favorite songs legitimately. So <laughs> how can he resist? How can you resist, Jimmy? Come on. <laughs> October 13th. So you guys had a great time then. There was a lot of buzz. I mean, at this point, were you guys keeping in touch? Did that kind of spark more keeping in touch and maybe thinking about doing more in the future once the Fallon thing happened? Um, we had already been keeping in touch a core group of us. But yes, that definitely reconnected us to um, Brentley and Jay um, in that moment. Um but yeah, I think from that, we just realized that we enjoyed being together and we have so much fun. And so when the opportunity came for us to do our first concert back together in April, or I'm, I'm sorry, in Los Angeles back in 2019, it was easy because we had 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 that reunion already. So it was easy to kind of get everybody back on board and, and together again. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's so cool. And I remember even, you know, and you guys can go to YouTube, you can check out that reunion on Fallon. But I remember as somebody who's generally in everyone's same age group and growing up, but still being kind of, I guess, blown away in the moment when you all talked about everything that you were doing in your lives and realizing that just like in real life, in our real lives, like you guys had you know, all branched out and we're doing like your own thing, um, beyond the band. And that's why it's pretty easy for nine years to go by before that reunion happens, I would imagine. But then it feels like no time has passed at all. I would imagine when, once you have that connection and, and now here we are again, uh, this is going to be this gigantic reunion event beyond just you guys being on stage at night, it's a meet and greet. Uh, you guys are basically going to be there. It's an all day event. There's going to be a big Q and a, you're going to have uh, Thomas Ian Nicholas and his band opening up for you. So for those in town, um, and there's going to be a lot of people even beyond the wackiness of New York city, a lot of people in town because New York comic-con is happening just a few blocks away to add to that insanity. But uh, it's going to be like its own little, you know, we've talked a lot about 90s con and a lot of the great conventions popping up all over the country. It's going to be a, a version of that. It's going to be that same good time feeling beyond the obvious, beyond the opportunity to bring the family back together, so to speak, to bring the fans in, to be a part of that experience. Uh, what specifically excites you most about October 13th, the more you think about it? Um, well, for starters, bringing my two and 
spend that time with them in New York and having them be a part of that world is making me excited. Nice. I am most excited to see uh, Diana because I haven't seen her since the show ended 30 years ago. Um, I'm excited at the prospect of us all, every one of us being in the same room and being able to share memories and share stories and just really take that in. Yeah. And then there's going to be a bunch of fans there too, just by the way, <laughs> yeah. who are going to be well, able to have to witness all of that. Cause I'm sure they will get to witness all the banter, all the things that go on with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and especially at the concert, because we just get to be this version of ourselves and take us ourselves back to that time. And they just get to go along for the ride with us, which if I was a fan of a group that I was going to see, that would be everything for me to be able to be on the inside and to know what those relationships are like and what those conversations are like. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And, and we get an awesome concert at night, uh, you know, as a, almost a bonus to yeah. all this, it feels like. So it's, it's right. going to be so cool. Um, I know you guys are excited. I know you guys are prepping whatever is going to go down to make it an awesome day, an awesome afternoon, an awesome night, and an awesome show. So yes. um, thank you so much, Kelly, for taking some time out to talk to us about it all. I'll talk about all things Kelly Packard. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much, man. It was so it was so great to, uh, to to chat with you. It was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, guys, and thank you all for checking us out, as always, here on 90s to Now. Please share, subscribe, and do all the things that you do to help keep us growing. And uh, we will see you in New York October 13th, and we'll see you next time here on 90s to Now. Thanks, Kelly. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>